Alright, hi guys, Mr. John here. In this video I want to sh sh oh, sh 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 I want to quickly show you how I calculate the value of a capacitor for a capacitive dropper. And this video is supposed to be in between those videos where I repair that currency detector where I modify it to LED. So we all know what a capacitive dropper is, but how to calculate the value of that capacitor without using some cheating, I mean software, some calculators online and stuff like that. Well, we know that the circuit looks like this. There is your capacitor, there will be a bridge, another side will go through the fuse or fusible resistor, you will have discharge resistor here so you don't get zapped, all that other stuff. Positive the bridge is right here, negative is right here. I'm gonna also put a resistor right here, a capacitor right here, and there will be my LEDs, 15 of them. That's an important bit. Next thing you need to do is you need to go and determine the current you want to use. I want to use 10 milliamps. So the, when, what you do then, then you take your lab power supply if you have one and basically what you need to do is you need what volt, uh, find a voltage drop across the LED when there is this current flowing. In my case it's a 3 volts across LED or maybe it's a li little bit higher. I may have, I did that measurement quite a while ago so I may forget something. Any row. We have 15 LEDs here. You also need to determine the amount of LEDs as I mentioned already, 15 of them. 15 times 3, we should have 45 volts here in order to get that current through LEDs. Next we need to take, determine the value of this resistor. I'm gonna just go and I'm gonna just call it 330 ohm. Just because. So we know that there is 10 milliamps flowing, so the drop across that resistor is gonna be 3.3 volts. So the right here we should have 48.3 volts in order for 10 milliamps to flow through LEDs. Next, we also need to take into account the voltage drop across diodes in the bridge. Let's just roughly say half a volt per diode current flows through two diodes in each half cycle, let's say one volt at the bridge. So right here we should have 49.3 volts. DC, that's important bit, right here. Let's imagine that this does not exist. This capacitor and with this resistor. We need to apply 49.3 volts here, DC, in order to get 10 milliamps through the LEDs. But it's a rubbish. You might say, we're dealing with AC, correct. So what we need to do next, we take a calculator. That's the only thing we're gonna use in this calculation, 49.3 times 0 0.707 converted to RMS. Let's call that 35 volts. Next thing you do is you know your supply voltage. In my case let's say 240 volts. So we need to drop the excessive voltage on this capacitor and that excessive voltage is nothing than this minus this. So 240 Minus, we need to drop 205 volts across the Z capacitor. And we know the current flowing through the circuit, so we can use an Ohm's law. Right now we're gonna imagine this capacitor as a resistor. And if it was a resistor, we will use an Ohm's law, which will say that resistance equals voltage over current. So, voltage we need to drop, 205 volts. I hope you can see what I'm writing here over current which is 0.1 not 0 0.01 amps that is 20,500 ohms we need next we're gonna need to find the value of the capacitor and to do that we use this formula of a capacitor reactance which is very simple it is 1 over 2 times pi times your frequency times capacitance value but we need to get a capacitance value, we know that what Xc is in this. So we rearrange the stuff and we get that C equals 1 over 2 times pi times f times Xc. So we put those values in, roughly. 
2 pi roughly 6.28 times your frequency 50. That's awesome. Alright, this stuff always happens in the middle of a rush. Times your XC, which is 20,500 ohms. And the value which, watch, which we will get is gonna be, in my case, uh, let me punch it in. Right, as you can see, N2, 1 over this is the same as all of this, 2 minus 1, and we get 1.55 to um, by 10 to min minus 7th power. I guess I pronounced it wrong, but any road, you know what I mean. So to get minus 7, it's not nanofarads, it's not microfarads, so we can shift the decimal point one place to the left, and that will be microfarads, so it will be point 155 microfarads or we can convert it to nanofarads by shifting the decimal point two places to the right and we will get 155 nanofarads it's that easy as you can see the closest value which exists in the standard row of values is 150 nanofarads and I have that capacitor and you will see that capacitor in the next video and I'm actually cheating a lot here because I already did that video and that capacity and 10 milliamps ain't gonna be enough and I presume then in next video I will use a larger capacitor but I will do a measurement with this value in that next video and you will see that the current will be roughly 10 milliamps thanks for watching see ya